You're watching Gears. You know, a few weeks ago, we told you a little story about the most iconic, influential car ever built, the 32 Ford, and how since almost the beginning, people were ripping the fenders off of them and running them down the lakes in the 40s, drag racing them and circle tracking them in the 50s, and all the other crazy stuff that's been done with the 32 Ford over the years. And since 07 marks the 75th anniversary of this cool little car, a lot of people have expressed interest in owning one. So what do you do? I mean, where do you start? Well, that's what we're going to show you with a project called the Rat Roaster. <laughs> OK, with any project, a 32 or whatever, before you start, man, you've got to have a plan. You have to have a direction. You have to have a vision of what you want to build, or you might as well just take your money, throw it up in the air, and let the wind carry it, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, obviously, a few weeks ago, we showed you what we're starting with. We went to Brookville Roadsters, got a brand new all steel 32 body and frame. Now, the big decision. What direction do we go with this thing? Now, obviously, nostalgia cars are hot, 40s, 50s style. Also, modern day smoothies are hot. But now, no, we're not going those directions. We're doing something completely different. We're actually going to build a car that looks like it rolled right out of 1968. Why? Well, because 68 was right in the heart of the muscle car wars, and a hot rod was still hot. So a guy building a car like this in 68 would have been running against Chevelles, Mustangs, Camaros, all that Mopar stuff. <laughs> it would have had to have been hot. So if the fastest car in the valley in 1968 was a Deuce Roadster, what would it look like? That's the car we're going to build. <laughs> All right, here's the plan. We're going to build a late 60s hot rod, roughly 1968. Now, most of the muscle cars back in that day were running in the mid-14s. Some once in a while would hit a high 13. So this car has got to run at least in the mid-12s because we're building the fastest car in the valley, and we want to spank those muscle cars. <laughs> now, it also needs to handle, stop well, and be reliable enough for daily use because we're not building any trailer queens here. No, this needs to be a runnable, drivable car. Now, number three and number one, they might argue a little bit because it needs to look like that, but it needs to do this like 2007. Now, number four, it needs to be reasonably affordable. And we're gonna do that by doing the best bang for the buck, just like somebody would have done back here. No stupid money here. And number five, it's got to be really cool. And if we pull these off, number five is going to take care of itself. Now, the first step to building a car like this is to mock it all up, starting with the front suspension. Now, since the beginning of time, the coolest front ends to ever go on these old hot rods is a dropped axle and some sort of radius rods. So that's what we're going to do. Now, this suspension system comes from a place called Total Cost Involved. And you can see there has been a lot of improvements made to this style suspension over the years. Now, you can get a fully polished system like we've got here, or if you're on a tighter budget, TCI also offers these in just bare steel. So you can save about 1500 bucks. Now, the system comes with a dropped I-beam axle, polished stainless spindles on the end, and then moving on out, you've got your steering arms, and then we decked them out with a fully polished disc brake system. Now, disc brakes were just starting to happen in the late 60s on street rods, so that fits our criteria. And it also fits number three, helps us stop better. Now, here in the middle, we have the spring, we've got the bat wings, got the radius rods, we've got all the steering linkage. Man, <laughs> I know it looks like a bunch of parts just exploded all over this table. But you're going to be surprised how simple and easy this all goes together. The first thing we're going to do is bolt the hangers and the bat wings onto the axle. Now make sure if you're using parts that are stainless steel that you give them a good coat of anises so the threads don't strip and gall on you. Now, I know that this is a mess and it's a pain, but it's one of the necessary evils to using stainless steel. Next, we'll follow that up with the spring and it just slides into the perches using the stainless hangers. Once the axle is assembled, we'll just bolt the whole thing into place on the front cross member using the supplied U-bolts and retainer. Now we're ready for the radius rods, or what's also known as a hairpin, because they look like giant ladies' hairpins. Now what they do is basically hold the axle in place, keep it from moving front to rear. 
Now up here in the front, they bolt to these bat wings. And then here in the rear, they bolt to this existing bracket. And that's why it's so cool to have somebody like Brookfield Roadsters set up your frame for you. Because at this point, everything should pretty much lay into place with no surprises. Hey, welcome back to Gears. You know, a lot of people have been wondering about the Banshee. You know, where'd that thing go? When's it coming back? Well, it's in the paint booth. It'll be back soon. But in the meantime, that gives us a chance to jump into this really cool 32 Ford Roadster project called the Rat Roaster. Now, the purpose of this is to show you that you can build a really cool hot rod that you can use and drive and have fun with and not spend 80 to 100 grand doing it. Next up, the brakes. Now, like I said before, we're using discs on this because it fulfills criteria number one. Guys were starting to put disc brakes on their hot rods in the late 60s. And number three, it will help us stop better. Now, we got this whole polished and chrome front suspension from TCI. That also includes this killer disc brake setup, which is designed to slide right on the spindle, starting with this polished backing plate. And the steering arm. Then we'll follow that up with the rotor and the hub. And finally, the crown jewel, these smooth and polished calipers. Now, the only trick to these is they come with these shims, and you'll want to shim this thing out to where it actually centers over the rotor. <laughs> yeah, look at that. A lot of polish, a lot of chrome. <laughs> All right. Now, we come to the steering, and the first part of that is bolting in this Flaming River Vega-style steering box. Now, on these kind of cars, you got a couple choices where you can mount the box. Now, the old way to do it is to mount the box something like this, put the pitman arm on, and then it pushes and pulls the drag link down the side. This is called a side steer. We're not gonna do that. Now, we're gonna do something that's a lot cleaner, a lot less prone to bump steer. It's called a cross steer. I'll explain that to you once we get this box bolted in. The first piece is the tie rod, and now is a good time to set some preliminary toe in for the wheels. Next is the drag link. Now, since the steering box makes five turns lock to lock, centering it up at two and a half turns will put us right where we need to be so we get a full range of steering. All right, let's take a look at how the cross steer works. Now, when you turn the wheel, the pitman arm pulls the drag link, and that in turn steers the wheels. Now, the cool thing about a cross steer is it's all tucked inside here, nice and tight, nothing hanging down the outside. Man, this is a cool setup. The problem with the cross steer, step back there a little bit. When you steer it, oops, <laughs> that axle wants to move side to side because the only thing holding that axle in place and keeping it from moving side to side is that spring, and that spring's got some give to it. And you've got tremendous side to side pressure coming from that steering box. Now, obviously, you can't leave it that way because it'll wander all over the road and mess up criteria number three. So the way we're going to fix it is with a pandered bar. And it bolts to this bracket right here on the frame and over to the bat wing on the other side. And that pretty much takes care of the front end. Now step back, take a look at this, man. This is awesome. And I know you're thinking, man, this is great. You just bolt it together in a few minutes, right? <laughs> no, no, remember, you are building a car here. And now is when you have to tweak it and make it right. And you have to understand caster and camber and toe in and all that steering geometry. For example, take a look at this. These adjustments right here at the bat wing, those are not just to center the axle front to rear. <laughs> They also set the caster of the axle, which is the rearward tilt. And that needs to be about six to eight degrees at ride height, which means once you have the motor in and you've got the frame raked the way it's gonna be, you're probably gonna have to adjust that or the car will probably handle like a unicycle. And you definitely don't want that. Now, don't be nervous on me here. This is something you can do. You just need to be prepared and do your homework before you get into a project like this. Now, there are a couple of things that we're still missing on the front of the car. Wheels and tires. <laughs> this is a very important decision because wheels and tires absolutely set the look and the tone of your project. Now, obviously, we want something that looks like it came off of a 60s race car. So, we went to our buddies down at Team 3 Wheels 
and got what they call the ET Drag Master. <laughs> Take a look at these things, man. They are cool. They have the little polished rim. They've got the cast center. They're a one-piece wheel, a little 15 by five. I mean, these things look like they came right off of a gas or a, or a fuel altered, man. They are awesome. They even have a special lug nut that just slides right in the pocket. Now, the tire is just as important as the wheel. And if you want vintage tires, you gotta go to Coker Tire. And that's where we went to get these Firestone front runners. Now, these have exactly the look that we're after. But the cool thing about Coker Tire is they make the tires vintage, but they use all modern rubber, all modern technology, so you can actually drive these things down the road and not end up in a ditch. All right, let's put these things on. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that front end is smoking. Hey, we're back, and deep in the middle of a 32 Ford Roadster project called the Rat Roaster. <laughs> now, this is doing a couple of things. First of all, we're paying tribute to the 75th anniversary of the Deuce Roadster. Second of all, we're showing you that you can actually build one of these things and have fun because there's a huge aftermarket out there to help you. Now, the first thing we did is lay out the design and the criteria for this project, which is always the first thing that you should do so you don't run off in the wrong direction. Then we installed a new front suspension now we're gonna move on to the rear because we wanna have this thing up and rolling and on tires before we run out of time today. So we need to get back to work. Now, this rear end housing and those axles came from total cost involved. And the cool thing about doing it this way is that it's already the right width and all the bracketry is already mounted to go right in the car. Now this saves you from having to go to a junkyard, finding an axle, cutting it down, and mounting all this bracketry. This is the way to go. Now, for the center chunk, we went to our buddies at Curry Enterprises, got one of these nine plus chunks, had them stuff it with a 350 gear, which is gonna be perfect with the transmission we're gonna use. And you're gonna find out about that on a later show. And then there's a True Track Posi stuffed in here. Man, this thing is ready to rock. Gonna give us plenty of power to both tires and it will handle whatever horsepower we're gonna throw at it. All right, let's put these things together. <laughs> Once the chunk's in place, we'll slide in the axles. What are you doing? All right, brakes are the next issue. And believe it or not, drum brakes on something that light work really well. And there's a lot of companies out there that have drum brake setups for 9-inch Fords. However, we want our rear brakes to match our front brakes. So we went to Stainless Steel Brake Corporation and got this rear disc brake setup. Now check this out. You got these four piston polished calipers. They're gonna match those fronts perfectly. Then you have a polished emergency brake caliper, slotted rotors, brackets, hardware, everything to put this in. Now some of you guys are going, whoa, expensive. No, I want disc brakes, but I don't wanna spend a lot of money. Well, you're in luck because Stainless Steel Brake Corporation has got some economy disc brake setups that'll give you the stopping power of discs without the high cost. However, they're not gonna look like these. When you see these on, you're gonna want them. The first step is to bolt the brackets to the housing. Follow that with the rotor. And then finally, bolt on the main caliper and the emergency brake caliper. <laughs> Look at that, is that cool or what? Now, with the axle assembled, we'll just get it in place under the frame so we can bolt it in. The suspension that we're gonna use to hold that axle in place is a triangulated four link and coilovers that we got from TCI. Now, I know, I know, nobody was really using a triangulated four link back in 68, but once this is in place, the only thing you're gonna see are those lower bars. And that is gonna look like a trailing arm, which they were using back then. So it's gonna have the right look to it. Now, if I wanna run those mid-12s or better, I need something that's gonna plant that axle and get traction to those rear tires. A four-link will do that for me. It also needs to be adjustable and handle well enough for modern day traffic. Coilovers will do that. So, four-link and coilovers it is.
Now this is the magic of a four link. Watch this, this pinion angle does not change as it goes through its full range of motion. Back down, look at that. But look at this, look at this. You still get great axle articulation when you hit a bump, but no side to side movement. That's because of those triangulated upper bars. This is a great setup. The last thing are wheels and tires. Now, just like the front, we went to Team 3 wheels and got a set of these drag masters. Except the big difference is these are 10 inches wide. <laughs> yeah. Now, the tires are key here. So we went back to Coker Tire and got a set of these vintage Firestone drag slicks. And these are also 10 inches wide. But the good thing about these, they're technically street legal because they got these little rain grooves in them. <laughs> yeah, right. Which means these are going to suck in the rain. <laughs> but they're going to be great when you try to hook up out on the street or on the strip, which is exactly what somebody would have put on their car back in 68. Matter of fact, it's what you should put on your car now. And <laughs> it's good to know that some things never change. Now, this absolutely takes care of number one, number two, but really pegs number five. When Stacy David makes house calls in the big Gears Nation truck, it makes for some pretty special moments. But if they can't come to your garage, the next best thing to do is check out the stuff they have online to help you out. Things like DVDs, wiring and build books, apparel and fender covers are just some of the things you'll find to help you with your project or make a great gift for that certain car nut in your life. If you're ready to get out there, build something, and then go smoke the tires on it, StacyDavid.com can help you do that. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where today we are laying out the rolling chassis of our 32 Ford Roadster project, and at the same time, showing you how to plan a direction for a project so you keep it moving in the right direction. Now, one more thing we want to cover before we move on to something else. This project went together fairly quickly. Some of you guys are going, oh, yeah, that's great. It just bolted together. <laughs> that is great, but that doesn't happen by accident. This is where your pre-planning comes in, and that's true with any project. For example, when you buy a bare frame like this from Brookville Roadsters, it's only a few hundred bucks more to have them weld in all the brackets, cross members, motor mounts for whatever setup you're going to use. That way, when you go to put it together, it does pretty much bolt together, and that saves you a ton of time, which makes that a great investment, which is one of our main criteria. <laughs> You thought I forgot about that one, didn't you? Tool Tech, brought to you by Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals since 1919. You know, if you're a gearhead, eventually you're gonna have to do some wiring. And most people hate this stuff because it is so tedious and so time consuming. Well, one of the reasons it is so tedious and time consuming is you're probably using the wrong tool. Take a look at this. This little wire stripper is what most people use, and that is the most worthless tool you can put in your toolbox because it's got these little grooves in it, and you got to try to decide what size your wire is. And then you oh, try to strip it off. That didn't get it. No, and then you go, that one, oh, that's too much, and you took some of the wire with it, and on top of that, you're laying on your back under the dash and fighting like this. No, this is not a good thing. Now, since having the proper tool is so important, take a look at this. Now this is a different type of wire stripper. You can pick up one of these things at just about any tool supply that specializes in wiring tools. Notice you've got a set of spring-loaded jaws down at the end, and what you do is stick the wire in to the length you want to strip it, and then one set of jaws holds the wire in place while the other side strips it. And there you have a perfect strip, not too deep, doesn't take any of the wire with it, no matter how thin of wire you use. Now, if you want to do a splice, all you do is come into the center, same thing, look at that, perfect for a splice. Yeah, isn't that a cool tool? Man, this will save you so much time and aggravation, especially if you do a lot of wiring. Man, I love this tool. And now, what are you working on? 
All right, for today's What Are You Working On, we've got us a four-wheel drive vehicle here. This comes from Tom Bowen in Jarvisburg, North Carolina, and he has got himself a Dodge M37, about 1963. Here's a shot of it on the beach. Check this thing out. Now, as you can see, Tom has put bigger tires on it. He's upgraded the truck. Here's a shot of the interior. He's done that. He's painted it. And here's a shot of the motor. Now, the motor's stock, but as you can see, he's put an alternator on it, got rid of the generator, upgraded all the electrical system, so this thing's usable. He takes it out and has a ball with it. Here is my favorite shot. Here is Tom on the beach, hooked up to a Navy buoy, which is huge. Now, only a power wagon guy would do something like this. First of all, because he knows he can pull it. <laughs> that is awesome, man. I would love to see what happened after that picture, if they escorted him off the beach or if they actually pulled that thing. Now, Tom has plans for this vehicle. He has got a diesel engine out of a Frito-Lay step van he's going to put in it. He's got a transmission from Government Liquidations, and he plans to put 44 to 46 inch tall tires on it. I say, Tom, go for the big boys. Put the 49s on there, man. The truck will handle it. And of course, he's going to put lockers front and rear. I, yeah, definitely recommend doing that. As you can see, man, Tom's got a great vehicle here. He has fun with it. That's what this is all about. Now, you, if you've got something you think you want to feature on the show, send it into GearsTV.com. We'll see if we can get it on the air. All right, takes care of it today. You know what I'm working on. You see what Tom's working on. Now, you, get out there and work on something.